Welcome back to the Modern Ham where we are connected in new old ways. Today we're going to be setting up an iGate and Digipeter using the Direwolf TNC, so stay tuned. This video is basically a direct follow-up from the ultimate guide to setting up Direwolf. I'll provide a link in the description if you have not seen it. But if you do not have Direwolf working with a radio with either Push to Talk or Vox, or heavily prefer uh, Push to Talk, then make sure to go check out the Ultimate Guide to Direwolf to make sure you're up and running on Direwolf first. This video is just basically building upon uh, a running form of Direwolf in order to get iGate functionality and Digipeter functionality. Since this is a series meant to be for new people into packet radio, real quick, an iGate is just basically an APRS node that is tied into the APRS IS information system. And that basically allows us to take packets we hear over RF and send them to the APRIS to be routed elsewhere. A digipeter is just like a voice repeater. It hears packets, our APRS packets on the air, and it simply repeats them. So Direwolf can be set up to do all of these things, which we're going to do now. So once again, if you don't have Direwolf at least running with a sound card interface and either push to talk or box, make sure to get that done first um, because this assumes that we've already done that. As always, we're going to be following along a blog post that I've already made. Uh, so the link for this blog post will be in the description so you guys can take the commands and copy and paste them um, if you don't want to do so from on the screen. So we're going to start with a basically a blank slate. Uh, you have a, well not a blank slate, but we're going to have direwolf.conf, right? And if you're on Windows, your direwolf.conf is going to be in the same folder as your direwolf.exe. And typically if you're on Linux, it's going to be in your user home folder. So I'm going to be doing the uh, Linux version, but it's actually the same. So Windows user can follow along right with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up that configuration file again, right? And if you guys are unconfig uh, unfamiliar with your direwolf configuration file, you need to get that set up first, right? So this is your configuration file. Now, if you've been following along in my series, all you really have is this... Uh, special set of things down here right uh, let me zoom in so we've enabled FX 25 and I told you guys basically to do a few tweaks for your radio to make sure that it's working right and that's what this TX tail is TX delay so this is how long it transmits before the push to talk ends this is how long before the push to talk or the um, the transmission of data actually starts once push to talk is open D wait is how long we wait before we begin transmitting um, Packet length, we don't worry too much about this video, uh, but just know that we've already set these settings up. Uh, one other thing that you should have already done is set up a push to talk interface if you're not using Vox, and uh, that will look like this right here, right? If you're on Linux, if you're on Windows, it'll probably look more like this COM port. And we've also already set up your audio device, so you should have. And this is right here will be different on Windows, but on Linux is a device. So once we already have that established, let's go ahead and add the iGate and digipeating functionality. So with your configuration file open, we're just going to scroll through the blog. And the first thing you're going to see is uh, we're going to look for the line that starts with my call, right? And I'm just going to control W that in Linux, or you can um, control F it in Windows, right? Um, I'm in Nano, so it's control W. And you're going to find a line that looks like this right here. It's going to be called my call, no call. We're going to change this no call to uh, our call sign hyphen dash 10. So I'm going to do MK, MK4 MKB dash 10. Why dash 10 you say? Well, uh, according to the APRS standards, which you may read if you like here, uh, there's a section that outlines the different purposes for each of these uh, SSIDs is what they're called. And dash 10, we are an internet connected station. Therefore, we will be using dash 10 for our SSID. So once you have that line, the next thing we're going to do is going to actually go enable iGating. So you should see a line that begins with this hashtag if you're, you know, a younger Twitter person or pound sign, you know, whatever you want to call it. I'll call it a pound sign for the sake of the video. Uh, we're going to find one called pound sign IG server. And it's going to look like this right here before we do anything to it. Now, for most of you guys, because most of my viewers are 
in the US, all we have to do is take away that little pound sign. And what that does is what's called uncommenting. So before it didn't really do anything in the configuration file, and now we've enabled it. Now, just so you guys can see, if you're outside of the North America, um, there are several other servers, right? So you have uh, South America, Europe, Asia, and Oceania. So if you guys are in any of those regions, all you have to do is just take that server and replace this right here with that one, right? So once you have that, it's uncommented basically, we need to do something called a login. So the APRSIS, in order to prevent bots and spam for just sending random garbage into the network, they have a sort of authentication measure and it's called passcode. Notice I said passcode and not password. These are not secret, right? These are not secret authentication things. They can be generated online from open source websites, but they're merely just so that bots have to take an extra step if they want to submit or send garbage into the network. And 99.9% .9 of the bots are stopped because of that. So how do we get this little passcode? Uh, first was find the line that we need it, right? And it's called, just like in the blog, um, pound sign IG login. If I can spell it right but you should come up with a line about like this right here and if you guys see any of these and for some reason in your configuration file the lines not there all you have to do is just put it in but it should be the case it should be there and in most cases so the first thing we're gonna do is take that little pound sign out and um, we're gonna replace the call sign that's here with our call sign that we just used KN well mine would be KN4 MKB-10 yours is gonna be your call sign-10 so I'm going to say KN4MKB-10. Now this right here is what the passcode is. And I'm going to provide a link to a website that generates these. You can host your own if you like. There's many out there. But all you have to do is just put in your call sign. And it's going to spit out a passcode. I don't care to show my passcode on screen because it's not a password, right? If you guys want to see it, you just go type in my call sign. Don't get those confused. Now I want to say that because a lot of people get upset about security um, with these, this was never meant to be an authentication thing. It's just really just to prevent bots. Anyways, now that we have that, right, you now have authentication into the um, APRS, IS, APRS IS, um, information system, right? So at this point, um, we're technically iGating packets, right? If we hear RF packets, we should... Uh, have the ability to forward them to the information system. But we're going to take it another step forward, and typically you'll have TX on your iGate, right, if you can. So if you have a radio connected to your direwolf instance, uh, if APRS IS packets come from the internet and they need to go somewhere in your general area, uh, you can allow your radio to transmit those packets out. So we're going to look for a line that's called IGTX via, right? Uh, and I'm just going to control F, control W that, whatever you want to call it. And you're going to come up on this IGTX via line. All we have to do is just take this line, this pound sign out. We don't have to do any modifications to it. As it is, it works great out of the box. So now if packets come in from the APRSIS to your direwolf instance, uh, and they're expected to be routed uh, out over RF, you can do that for your community, which is nice. So that actually takes care of all of the iGate functionality. Uh, your, as it would stand right now, your direwolf would do iGating back and forth. But there's a couple more things we need to do. Uh, number one, we need to enable digipeating. And this is another very easy step. Uh, there's already a line here in the direwolf configuration file called digipeat. And once again, we're just going to go look for that. Now... It might be easier just to scroll through it, huh? Is this the line we're looking for? Yes. So once you find it, it should be a digipeat space zero space zero. We're just going to remove that pound sign. It's going to uh, enable that line. And now that's all it took to enable digipeating. Uh, it's quite literally that easy. Now you have digipeating enabled and you have uh, iGating 
enabled. So you're, the next thing and the last thing that really want to do is beaconing. So, you know, as unmanned stations, we need to still identify every 10 minutes. And also we need to let people around our local area know that we exist. That way they can use us. Uh, and we also need to let the APRS IS know that we're there so that people browsing there can see us as well. So we'll need two different beacon lines, one for RF and one for the information system. So the first one that we're going to do over RF is, uh, it's going to be this line here, right? Now, the easiest case, uh, you, can, you can control F and find there is a beacon line. Uh, I'm going to try to find that now. And there's actually three beacon lines, and they vary in complexity, right? So one of them, uh, one of them, the top one are, is not digipeed. Well, it is. Let's see, it it is digipeed with a path, and the second one is not. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and paste our own line in here, right? And then I'm going to break this down. So first, I'm going to take this line, and I recommend you copy and paste it in here uh, instead of just typing it out just in case. But let's talk about what is going on with this line. So the first part, um, this delay means that we're going to wait this many minutes after Direwolf starts to initiate the first beacon. Not too difficult. Every 30 minutes. So after the first time we beacon it out, we're going to do it every 30 minutes. Now, since this is over RF, I'm going to do it a little bit more often. I'm going to say every 10 minutes. Um, we also have the overlay symbol, um, and then we're going to use the digipat, uh, the digipeter uh, symbol for the symbol. Uh, if you guys want to look in the Direwolf documentation, they have a list of different symbols that you can use. Now, this lat and long can get a little tricky because it wants it in a very specific format. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that. So if you go over to the APRS.FI uh, website, find your QTH, where you're at, where you're at specifically, right? And uh, in my case, I might be like right here. So you're going to notice, and it's, I know it's a little small, and I can't enlarge it. But as I move my mouse up here, I don't know if you can see up here on the right, top right, there's coordinates there on the top right of the screen as I move my mouse around. So you'll see like a degrees and um, I don't know if it's minutes, decimal minutes or minutes, seconds. I get those confused. But either way, you just need to take the exact format. It is up there in that top right or wherever you put your mouse where your QTH is. And you just need to plug it in right here. After you get your lat long put in, uh, you have a power. And this is basically just your transmit power. This lets other people know if you're a 5 watt station or a 50 watt station. It can be handy. Uh, your height, this is going to be your height, I think in meters above ground. It could be feet. I'm sorry, guys, I don't know. Uh, either way, it, I think it's, I really want to say it's feet. May, I'll probably put it on the screen. The gain is obviously, it's just the gain of your antenna. If you know that, uh, you should put it in. And the very last part that we're going to worry about is the comment and let me stretch this out so the comment is like a short text message that you can send to your local area um about people about, about your station right you might just want to tell people hey i'm an i gate and i'm a digipeter just in case they don't have a visual tool to see aprs uh they can still see the text so you know you might want to put you know aprs i gate and digi I'm, and that's what i'm going to do aprs i gate and digi Great, so that actually takes care of your RF uh, beacon. Now, I said that we needed two beacons, right? So the next thing that we are going to do is do our APRSIS beacon. Now, this is one that goes straight to the internet, to the APRSIS, where APRS.FI, where we were just looking at, would be. And uh, I'm going to paste that just below my RF beacon, and I'll be sure to put, uh, you know, Make sure to copy and paste this from the blog or, or type it in. Uh, there are pre-made selections here if you guys want to just edit those, but just make sure it, it matches mostly. Um, so you've already done the legwork here, the footwork on checking your lat and long. It's all really the same options. Uh, the only thing that is going to change is you see this send to IG 
on the eye gate line. And the next thing that we're going to change as well is instead of doing every 10 minutes, we're going to do this every hour. Why do we do it every hour? It, we're already sending messages to the internet over TCP. There's no reason that we need to keep sending them because it's going to get that message if you have internet access, right? Whereas with RF, there's going to be a lot of stations that may not hear you a lot of the times just because of the nature of radio. So we might, might want to send those um, messages a little bit more frequently. So... I'm going to make this match here, right? So I'm going to make my power 5. And I'm going to make my heights 10. And I'm just going to do 2 for the gain. And the comment, it's basically you can do, leave this the same if you'd like. Um, mine's going to be, yeah, mine's going to be slightly different, just so. Um, and that basically takes care of that. Oh, one thing, the overlay. You'll see this overlay is a little different, this T, and the symbol is iGate. So we're just telling the internet version of the beacon, hey, I'm an iGate and I am transmit capable. If you're not going to be transmit capable, meaning you maybe not have a radio plugged in, you can um, change this to an R just to let people know that you're receive only. Um, after that, we're basically ready to go ahead and start Direwolf and test this out and make sure it works. So if you're on Windows, file save. If you're on Linux, nano, control X, shift Y, enter. And as long as your direwolf.conf is named direwolf.conf, all you have to do is now start Direwolf. This is something we've covered before. And if all goes well, your Direwolf will start and you'll see in just a second, uh, you're now connected to the iGate server. And you will also see that you've been verified, logged in, and last, and within 30 seconds, you should see us report our position over to the APRS uh, IS. Uh, we'll be able to check the APRS.FI website and make sure that that uh, happened correctly. So I'm just waiting just a second here. There it is. Um, the IG means that we're reporting to IG, the uh, IGATE traffic. So Let's go take a look and see what we found. So here we are. This is us uh, on APRS.FI. We are their little black diamond or the iGate symbol with the T for the transmit capable. And as you can see, we have our little um, symbol, our, our little message. And we have our little gain and our uh, power and all of those settings that we had just put in. Right here, you'll see that I just beaconed over... Um, Right here, sorry, the 0L, that means that we just beaconed over RF. And it looks like a digipeter around us just picked us up and let us know that it saw us. Uh, and actually, our symbol changed because the symbol's different on, um, on RF than it is that we're sending to the iGate server. If you guys want to change that to be the same, that you, you can. But as you can see, we, we're now iGating and we're digipeating packets. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we have one more APRS video to do and I just wanted to do this because uh, I want to cover Windows and Linux. We're going to do APRS client just like we did Pinpoint on Linux instead of Windows. And we're going to be using a program called yet another ARPS client for that. And that will be the last video in the APRS IS, the APRS uh, packet radio introduction, right? So we set up Direwolf, we configured a client for Windows and Linux, and we set up a, a iGate digipeter. And that's pretty much all of the basics to let you guys turn loose, right? So next week, and I've already began a lot of footwork on this, we're going to go ahead and start putting out the bulletin board uh, system videos, which I know a lot of you are waiting for. So real quick, thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, appreciate you for being here. And if you guys have any problems whatsoever trying to get your iGate or your digipeter to work, be sure to let me know in the comments. We're not leaving anybody behind, right? 73.